Hello everybody and welcome back today to another video of Cephalo Ed. So in this video guys, I'm going to introduce to you the suction cups of an octopod. And these suction cups are one of a kind. They are truly one of the most exquisite and weird looking parts of an animal I think in the world and they are super helpful and are an extremely important thing for an octopus to survive in the wild and to evaluate and feel the food and multiple other things to recognize objects and fish and areas of where they go. But before we get into that, I really want to mention that this channel is almost at 100 subscribers. It is absolutely awesome. We are like this close, that close to getting 100 subscribers for this channel. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, your guys' support has just been truly outstanding and amazing. And it just it makes me so happy to look at my channel every day and seeing almost 100 subscribers. So. If you guys could please like this video, subscribe to my channel, absolutely appreciate it, and hit that notification button. And again, just thank you so much, everybody, for all this. It's just, it's truly a dream come true. But anyways, let's get right into the video, guys, about the suction cup of an octopod. Alrighty, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the suction cups of an octopod. So suction cups, the suckers are just suction cups. They're like cups, but they create suction that are key for survival for coleoids. And they're extremely key for survival for octopuses as well. And I'll tell you why. They have a chemical sensors or sensory cells that allow them to taste and touch objects. So these chemical sensors allow them to evaluate their environment meaning they're able to map out where they're going. They're able to recognize and taste those objects so it can help them better figure out on where they want to go, where they go, or remember where not to go because of what's there. And not only they are able to taste and touch, but they're also to feel and also sense and smell. So their suction cups are like our skin and mouth all in one way because our skin we're able to feel things that latch onto our skin and our mouth we're able to taste different stuff and our nose as well we're able to smell and all those senses those key senses for our body are in one suction cup and that is absolutely outstanding and if you kind of think about it they must have just acute senses all around because they have just on one arm they have like 200 to 250 suction cups so they must just have such a, acute senses and are very sensitive anyways each arm has an array of suction cups that are attached to the base of muscle on the arms where it allows the suckers to move in any direction and change in size and so this is really cool so if you guys are wondering like how can octopuses control all these suction cups on just one arm? Well, this is because their nerves that connect to their brain, that alien looking brain, have huge nerves that go all the way down into all those arms. And these nerves have to be really big, full of neurons, because they have to control all these suction cups. And these suction cups are able to move in any direction they want, they have like their own minds. And so it's very important for them to have very big nerves, to have all those neurons that come around and go into those suction cups. And suction cups consist of very soft biological materials. However, though, they are extremely strong with immense suction. So I'm exaggerating this immense suction, immense suction because their suction is incredibly strong. So to tell you how strong they are, they can hold up to... 16 kilograms if you're not sure how much 16 kilograms are in pounds that's 35 freaking pounds that is a lot and now if you really think about it a arms i believe is 260 i mean whoa 250 suction cups on an arm and each suction cup can 
um, have a suction of 35 pounds. Now, if you really think about it, that if all those arms latched onto something and all those suction cups got into like a fish or, you know, probably a human, it could probably most likely rip it apart with all that force that these suction cups are able to withstand. And it's really insane. But anyways, I want to give you guys a cool little fun fact about the suction cups. So there's this really cool thing that scientists use because if you're a cephalopod scientist, which I want to be, um, you're going to have to figure out a lot of suction cups because some of the suction cups can be damaged. Some of them can be really damaged, have an infection, etc. Bad stuff can happen. Or if you just want to find a really good suction cup. But there is a lot of suction cups on an octopus. And so they use, scientists use this thing called an OSIC. This is called an octopus suction identification code. And this allows the scientists to identify the suckers that they specifically want on the arm. So I wanted just to tell you guys that. And this is on Octonation, so I'm going to post a link in the description down below so you guys can get a better understanding because it's a very hard topic to talk about, and Octonation explains this a whole lot better than I will. So I just wanted to stop that right there. I'll put the link down in the description below so you guys can check that out and get a really good understanding of what the OSIC is. And it's truly awesome how scientists use this to... Um, navigate where the suction cups are and which one they want and so let's get right on to the anatomy of a suction cup so here we have a suction cup so we're going to start at the bottom here the most noticeable notice part this is called the infundibulum and this is the soft and flexible part of the suction cup this is where you can like kind of turn inside out a little bit it's, it's that flexible so let's get into the acetabulum now. This is the roundish cavity that is inside the infundibulum. So if you look at an octopus suction cup, so let's go up to the first slide right here. Let's go to this arm right here, all the way to the right. You see that in the infundibulum, but inside you see that roundish cavity, that is the acetabulum. On the outside, we have this epith epithelium. And now this is actually the mucus that surrounds the mucus leg that surrounds the whole entire suction cup. So if any of you guys have ever interacted with an octopus, uh, I told you guys my story about interacting with side the octopus. Octopus has suction cups in their skin is extremely mucusy, and so there, so is their suction cup. So that mucus part is called the epithelium. And then now. We're going to get into the muscles that really control these suction cups and what gives them such power and strength of suction. So right here, these little lines, these are called, I mean, not little lines, this whole thing right here. This is actually called the radial muscle. And this is what helps control this acetabulum. So when this contracts, that's going to open up the bottom of the infundibulum. So if you guys ever had like a, um, a suction cup before, or like one of those uh, cool little rubber duckies. Um, so we'll take a rubber ducky for example. Pretend that it is a suction cup, even though it's completely irrelevant to a suction cup. But you can create suction with the bottom of it because it has that little hole at the bottom. So what I would do is I would take like the head of the rubber ducky and I would squeeze it. And pretend your fingers are the radial muscles. So that's going to squeeze the top of the head, and that will be the acetabulum. And that's going to open up the infundibulum. So if you guys observe that, the bottom of it will actually start to expand. And then when you stick it onto something and let loose of that radial muscle a little bit, all that air, but instead of air, we're going to take that water. That water will go in, and that's going to create that suction that will stick or latch right onto that surface. In talking about surfaces, suction cups are able to latch onto multiple surfaces, not just smooth surfaces, but also very rough, ragged, uh, you name it. They, these suction cups, you can just latch onto anything. And so it's, it's pretty uh, rad how they're able to do this. And so I hope that example did help you guys out a little bit because when I use rubber duckies, I always pretend that it was like a, a suction cup of a 
octopus. So it's it's that'll definitely help you out get a better understanding of how that works. And now also the radial muscles do that. But right in here, I apologize, I didn't draw this in here, but be tender there's like this tube that goes around. This is gonna be a muscle sphincter or right here the circular muscles well the circular muscle is also called a sphincter as well this will go around and that's also going to tie it up right in the middle that will also create that seal and then underneath that we're going to have the circular muscles and this is also what helps in fundibulum really lock that suction and keep that water in there and keep the volume of that suction cup and then on the outside inside of outside inside of the suction cup we're going to have our outer connective tissues cross connective tissues then we're going to have our inner uh, wall connective tissue go that goes all the way around and then right here these lines these are called move my camera right here the extrinsic i apologize i have a hard time saying this name extrinsic muscle there we go extrinsic muscle now what this does is you have all these muscles to help create that suction, but you need a muscle that helps move the suction cup in different directions. Because I mentioned that before in a slide where suction cups are able to move in different directions. These are what the extrinsic muscles do. These help it move up and down, but also move it in different directions of where the suction cup wants to go. And so that is uh, how the suction cup functions to create immense suction and move in different directions. And I hope you, um, guys got something out of that and because it's a really fascinating work of art of how a suction cup works and it is a little bit uh, difficult to understand but once you understand it uh, get to used to it more it's just it's kind of like a light bulb moment you're like oh so that's how it does that and it won't be uh, so hard to understand but also talking about how the, mu the eccentric muscles work and how the octopus move in different directions they, so, when I went to New England Aquarium to see Cy Montgomery and inside the octopus, Cy, or I don't remember it was Wilson, they fed the octopus. But this was one of the most bizarre parts that I've ever seen. And so what they did is they took a fish, they were given their food, but instead of just throwing it inside to where the mouth is, they put it on the tip of the arm. And when you watch the arm, the the suction cups would start to move inward towards the mouth. And if you guys have ever seen like movies where, if you guys have seen Soul Surfer, that's the only thing I can think of right now. If you guys have seen that, there's a part where they go to a part in Hawaii or it's Philippines, somewhere in the Philippines, they take sandbags and they move them. But how they move them, they grab it and they give it to another person and then keep that cycle going on. This is what the suction cups do. So be ten imagine the suction cups are people and they have those bags. So the person has that bag, it's gonna move it down and it's gonna bring it down into the mouth. And that is what these suction cups are doing. They're taking that food and bringing it down inward into the mouth. And so instead of having the suction cup and they bring the arms in, they're working out that suction cup and working that, that intelligence even more. And so that is how the suction cup works. It's extremely, extremely crazy. And it just really tells you how high the intelligence of an octopus is. And so now... Um, I want to show you guys what the suction cups look like outside, not in an anatomy form. So here you can see all the infundibulums. Then inside you'll see the man, the uh, astabulum, the roundish cavity. It's kind of hard to see in this picture. It's a little bit blurry. But for example, let's take these suction cups here on the right third arm. You're going to see like the swellness under the suction cup and that is where the extrinsic muscles are to move the suction cups in different directions bring them in move them up and down do all that jazz to the suction cup to move and so i just wanted to show you guys that so you guys can get a better seeing of what i've been talking about and 
So I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was an absolute blast to learn more about the Suction Cups. They're truly a masterpiece, and they're extremely important for the octopus to live. And not only octopus, but their relatives, the squid and cuttlefish, because they do use the suction cups, but they use it differently than the octopus. The octopus kind of took the suction cups, and they used the suction cups to also walk on the ground and to taste and feel and smell other stuff around their environment. But anyways, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And remember, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification button. I'll absolutely love it. And again, have a fantastic day and I'll catch you guys up on the next video.